All right, everyone. This is a bit embarrassing, but uh, I have uploaded this video before, but apparently there was no audio. And this has been recently pointed out by a student of mine, a subscriber of mine. So I'm reloading this video and this time with my audio in it. So in today's video, I'm going to be explaining uh, what is a protocol and uh, understanding what is a protocol uh, is important if you are studying the subject of international merit law, uh, especially at the level of chief mates or masters. Now I'll try to simplify the meaning of this word protocol because it's often used when you are studying conventions or uh, related items related to the mate. So what is the protocol? So I'll give you an example also later on when I'll talk about the protocol that was introduced for the convention of Marpol. But uh, when any kind of a major amendment is to be uh, included uh, in the regulations that make up a convention, a protocol is called among the IMO member states who are actually signatory of the original convention. So if a certain number of states got together, they signed a treaty which ratified a convention and now you need to incorporate some changes in the regulations. You need to call a protocol among those signing states so you can introduce it. It is a term which is uh, less formal, but it is important. So it is a subsidiary to a treaty and is drawn up by the same parties that actually signed the original treaty or the original uh, uh, convention or the regulation that brought about the convention. Such a protocol deals with ancillary matters such as the interpretation of a particular clause not inserted in the treaty or the regulation of technical matters. Ratification of the treaty will normally uh, by the very act or fact involves ratification of a protocol. Now, uh, there is something called an optional protocol now to a treaty is an instrument that establishes additional rights and obligations to a treaty all right so i have explained what is treaty before in my other videos i have explained what is convention so i don't want to explain those meanings again now the protocol is adopted on the same day but is of independent character and it is subject to the independent ratification all right, so everybody has to agree to that protocol. So the parties may have agreed to the treaty, it may have agreed to a convention, it may have agreed to a uh, regulation, but they all also have to agree to the introduction of the protocol. So protocol is separately, it is separately uh, ratified by the IMO member states. All right, so such, such protocols enable certain parties of the treaty to establish among themselves a framework of obligations which reach further than the general treaty and to which all parties of the general treaty have consent, creating a two-tier system. Uh, then we have protocols which are based on framework treaty. Now this is an instrument with very specific substantive obligations that implements the general objectives of a previous framework or umbrella convention. An example of a protocol based on framework treaty is the 1987 Montreal Protocol uh, which was introduced in the convention for substances that deplete the ozone layer. Now such protocols ensure that uh, there is a more simplified and accelerated treaty making process and have been used particularly in the field of the international environment law. Then we have a protocol to amend. Now a protocol to amend is an instrument that contains provisions that amend one or various former treaties such as the protocol of 1978 that amended the 1973 treaty on MARPOL. So as you probably if you have studied MARPOL, uh, MARPOL stands for Marine Pollution Convention on Marine Pollution. It was introduced in 1973 and then uh, it was further revised through the 1978 protocol. So that is when the protocol was used as well that was used to amend the Marpol Convention. Now it is this function of the protocol in international law that seafarers or mariners should be comfortable in using as this is what and is and will be used pertaining to them at IMO. So it is a protocol to amend. So that's why if you have uh, if you have noticed if you are studying any convention uh, we always talk about amendments. So when it comes to seafarers and mariners because I know that you don't need an in-depth law of or in-depth knowledge of the maritime law 
uh, you need to understand these protocols that are used to amend the conventions because uh, as the convention is introduced uh, and with time uh, instead of revising the whole convention these amendments protocols to amendments are introduced and that is what you have to keep yourself updated with that is why seafarers uh, this is the protocol a protocol to amend is the one that you have to remember the most for a change to be termed as a protocol and not an amendment two parameters have to be fulfilled all right firstly the issue should be of very uh, it should be of vital importance uh, and the change should be such that the existing face of the treaty convention is altered. For example, the change of 1997, which introduced Annex 6 to Marpol, is called a protocol and not an amendment. Uh, the reason is because the issue of air pollution uh, was of vital importance and the introduction of new Annex changed the face of the existing convention. And you know that with NX6, you've got all these, uh, the new things that SOX, NOx emissions came about, uh, you know, uh, the all the other countries are now becoming stricter with uh, the convention, the N NX6, um, and uh, regulations are becoming stricter. So it kind of changed the, the quality of fuel oil that had to be used on ships. Uh, that also had to change, low sulfur uh, content has to be in the uh, fuel oil. So th that brought about a big change and that is why it was called a amendment. Uh, it was called a protocol, it was not called an amendment. So amendments are smaller changes and whereas protocol brings a big change. Uh, a protocol is actually one of the ways in which even conventions are modified, you know, that is what you have to understand. So protocol is used uh, for the modification of uh, these conventions that are introduced by IMO such as SOLAS convention or STCW and they are used when they are trying to bring about a significant change to the original convention. So, you know, 2010 Manila amendments to STCW and uh, or, or if they're trying to add a new chapter to the original convention. All right. Uh, or a when, when a change is applicable to all the chapters of a convention uh, or when the IMO feels the change needs to be brought by the protocol. So another example I can give you is that IMO introduced the harmonized system for ship certification. And uh, this change required change in the protocol of the SOLAS Convention 1974. So IMO had to bring about these changes by a new protocol to the SOLAS called the 1988 Protocol to the SOLAS. So all the states that had ratified the SOLAS 74 uh, will do not become automatically do not become party to this protocol. They have to choose to be part of this protocol. They will choose separately whether they accept the new protocol or not. All right. So I thought a protocol can also be used as a supplementary treaty, of course. But like I said, you guys as mariners, as seafarers, you have to focus mainly on the protocol to amend function uh, because that is the one that normally uh, the seafarers have to become used to. All right. Otherwise, protocol has a lot of functions. It can be a protocol for signature. And I've told you protocol can be optional protocol based on framework treaty protocol as a supplementary treaty protocol to amend. So there are about five main functions. And that is why uh, you guys don't have to go into all those details. Just focus on the one that you have to know and know an example that would be good enough for you to be able to answer any questions that is related to the uh, protocol function of the maritime law. All right. So let me know if you guys have any doubts and uh, thank you for watching the video. Bye for now.